Hey guys, welcome back. If this is your first time watching this, my name is Matt and this is my 1950 Caterpillar D4 that I found out in the woods and rescued and I'm trying to resurrect and put it back to work. So for this video, I'm hoping to get this winch pulled off of here. Something I really didn't want to do until later in the project, but it turns out I allegedly have to because to get the steering clutches out, you need to get this out of the way. This thing weighs a lot. It weighs like 1,300 pounds. Um, if you're in one of the last holdouts for the metric system, that's about 600 kilograms. Or it weighs a little bit less than a smart car. So uh, it's going to be pretty dangerous to get this off of here. Fortunately, I have the cheapest equipment I, can, I could find at Harbor Freight to help me. And uh, anyway, let's get to it. Let's take a quick look at this winch. This thing has a lot of problems. And then we'll, uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you, show you my plan on getting it off, and then we'll go from there. First big problem with it is this drum just looks like it's completely just smashed into place and then it's not going to turn. I'm assuming this is where it would, it would be rotating. Um, I cannot pull this cable out. I've tried before. I tried pulling it with my tractor when the, when the winch was in neutral and it was not coming out. So I think what I'm going to do is just manually unspool this cable just to get it out of here. Um, because to get the winch kind of, or the, uh, the drum kind of fixed up, I'm going to have to ha not have the cable on there anyway. It'll be easier when it's still on the tractor versus doing it later. Uh, this clearly not stock. This is like a piece of three inch steel pipe uh, for the fair lead. So that's gonna go. Um, in here, it's, it's, uh, it's actually not too bad. That's the, that's the brake compartment. I'm not gonna complain about that right now. Gears look okay. Uh, there's a lot of rust kind of flake that just fell down when I took the top off but the gears all look pretty good. So that's, that's good. In the, the oil here, we got some, this looks like kind of like honey mustard. Um, but once again, the gears look okay. I think to get the drum off, you have to take this off, which I don't have a socket for that. That's like, I think it's like three and a quarter, three and an eighth or something. Um, but I am gonna take this off so I can uh, hook my chain to it. And um, apparently, so down here, these pipes right here, I believe are for filling the final drive up. So they go with the winch and they're not even bolted in down there. So I guess they're just, hopefully should pop right out. I do have to unbolt these from the draw bar. The one interesting thing here is if you look in here, uh, there's just gi giant cracks in the case. And there's one over here, which you probably can't see because of how dark it is. But uh, clearly that's from someone over spooling it and then you know whatever they had is the end went, went in there and it just cracked itself open. It looks like they've welded it over a few times. So uh, I'm guessing it doesn't leak, but um, yeah, that's uh, quite the, shows you how much power this thing has that it can just rip itself apart like that. So to actually lift it, I did get this uh, from Harbor Freight. This is a two ton leveler, so you can, um, you can turn this hand crank here and it, it moves this around. So you sh I should hopefully be able to uh, pull this off of here. Really what I'm worried about is, I mean, you, you want to have a nice uh, balance because as soon as you unbolt it, I have no idea what it's going to do. If it's going to want to flip backwards, if it's going to want to drop straight. There is a drive shaft that goes from here. You can see it down there up into the, the transmission there. So this thing, as soon as it's unbolted, it needs a lot of tension. It needs to slide straight back out and then I can move it around, set it down somewhere, hopefully. So hopefully this works. This is rated for two ton. This is, you know, half of one ton, maybe a little bit more. So we should be good here. Um, wasn't super happy about the welding on this, this link, but I think it'll be fine. And uh, yeah, that's good. That's, that's it, I think. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Well, that thing was on there. Let's see what's actually in here. I think this might be the original roller. I'm not sure why that, maybe they just put this so it rolls better. Now, the guy actually wants this cable back, which he can have, I guess, but uh, hopefully I can get it off here without cutting it up too much. This 
probably going to take a while. This is a good exercise. This cable must weigh a few couple hundred pounds, so it's probably best that it's getting off anyway. Uh, normally I wouldn't be dragging through 100 feet of cable for every spool here, I'd just be cutting it, but the guy I bought this thing from, he apparently really attached to this and he wanted it back, so I promised I'd bring it back to him. Otherwise I'd be done by now. Well, I was hoping this would have happened earlier so I could have cut it, but it, uh, it's finally bound up here, right, at, right here in the bottom. So I already cut it and I'm gonna cut again in a couple other places to see if I can kind of get it free. There's only probably about, I don't know, 50 feet of rope left, so it's the best I could do. I ain't gonna lie, that was a lot of work. I had to put a couple more cuts in it at the end there because it was just so bound up, but... Uh, yeah, hopefully this guy uh, really appreciates that rope. He said it was too dangerous to use, which I, I think it was too, but he said he wanted it because it was his friends or something, uh, which doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. So now you can see in here, you can see that weld repair right there where it, it smashed itself open. And it goes from here all the way down. I can see it all the way down to there. It's, it's, it got cracked and re-welded. And then you can see here more of this more of this drum is just pretty thrashed. Really, it actually looks like here. Uh, maybe they backed into something. I'm not sure what they did to do that. This drum, this side looks okay. But this one just took some kind of impact right there, it looks like. It's also, yeah. I'll worry about that another day. Okay, next step here is removing these bolts on this drawbar bracket. And uh, before I do that, I gotta hook up the hoist because I'm gonna to have to remove those jack stands. Those jack stands are holding the whole back up right now because this winch is so heavy, it'll this whole dozer is gonna flip over. So once I have the winch off, there's there's some jack stands under here that, that'll hold up the front. But we need to get that hoist over here before we start unbolting stuff. I got the hoist and leveler set up here. So we'll see how this thing works. Um, I did a fair amount of thought on this. I'm gonna set it down on this dolly here I kind of put together. Um, I'm hoping I can get this to right on the low low part of that cribbing and then the high part set it, set that on there. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit tricky because the dolly has to go above these orange legs here from the hoist. So that's why it's up on another level. So I'll get it kind of positioned and then I'll shoot some uh, framing nails into that just so it doesn't slide around. Um, but uh, anyway, so there's, there's some tension on here. Uh, I'll put some more tension on there, I guess. And then I'll take these jack stands out and take those bolts out and uh, then it's just four more bolts and this thing's ready to come out. I think we'll call the threads on these things toasted. There's just like a, a vague hint of a thread <laughs> thread on these things. They've been toast like pretty hit pretty hard down there. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a short one and one eight socket that's going to clear this with a wobble on it. So to do this one the hard way, unfortunately, we'll be here for a while. That's no, not too tight, at least. I like to spend my Saturday night right here. All right, one out of four. It's nice that these are fine threads because it takes about twice as long to get these, these nuts off. I can't get this socket on here because of the brake lever. And uh, even looking in the directions here, there's this nice gentleman here wearing a fedora and what appears to be a suit using a box wrench on it. So I guess that's what I'll be doing too. Yeah, need a breaker for that one. Oh, that one's on there, good. Ugh. Yeah. 
the guy with the fedora really tightened that one, let me tell you. Now this is, winch has obviously been off before because I can see RTV around the outside. And uh, I, when I read the directions, you know, that came when it came from the factory, it came with a giant gasket that covered the whole back of the tractor. So obviously it's been off. And you, I mean, like I said, you have to take it off to get the steering clutches out. So it kind of makes sense. Okay, should be free. I have a feeling this is gonna be difficult to separate, but we'll see here. Should have done these first. Eventually I'll learn my lesson here. And uh, I kind of played around with the leveling and I think this is a pretty good spot based on how much of uh, an opening there was here. So lift it up a little bit. Yeah, get it kind of level and then we can try to separate it here. Yeah, it's popping right off. Once you take the bolts out, it's amazing how much easier it comes out. Okay. Ooh, it's free. Okay. So now the trick is to balance, well, it's not really a trick, but uh, just to balance it so that drive shaft doesn't bind up on anything. There we go. There we go, free. And this is a, uh, this here would be a pilot shaft. So this actually looks pretty good. Lines look good on here. Kind of a lot of play in this. Okay, now to set it down without killing myself. Yeah, this thing's pretty heavy. That's a nice sound. So I think I just kind of need to hold it here because it does want to twist. Let's stick this block in. All right. Oh, that was fast. Whoops. I'll try that slower. Try to wheel it a little bit here. Doesn't feel too tippy. It's better, it's easier. Not as bad as the engine, that's for sure. Okay, finally found a spot where it wasn't uh, super wobbly. It's pretty, it's on there pretty solid. I shook it. I just don't want like kids running through here. So I'm gonna put some other stuff around it just so they can't get it back here. Um, I mean, it, it, they wouldn't be able to knock this thing over. It's, it weighs so much and it's in there pretty good, but you never know. So, uh, this thing is actually interesting. It, it splits, this whole case splits all the way down here. I'm guessing that's how you take the drum off is you have to take the whole thing. There's like a bolt right there. There's another one down below. So I, hopefully I don't have to do that, but you never know. Anyway, onto the back here. I, it looks like there's no tag on here. They must have taken it off to put the winch on, unfortunately. So I don't think I have a way of knowing if this actually is a 1950 or not. But anyway, uh, I am going to go ahead and see if I can get the steering clutches the rest of the way out. So the issue, by the way, 
there's a bolt here. I think you have to take that out. And then there's this, uh, this, this thing looks, looks threaded. So you probably have to put something in there and slide hammer it out. And that holds these two uh, bars, bracket bars in place. And then once these are out, then the whole steering clutch should come out, allegedly. There's so much more room to work back here now, it's great. These bolts are just sitting in here. I don't even think they're screwed in, so I'm not sure what this is about. Yeah, they weren't screwed in. Oh, there's a hole. I see. These are just pins. There's a, you can reach under here, like this. Yeah, that was just, uh, that was also just in there. I doubt this is loose enough to just pull out. Oh, nope, it does slide out, look at that. I'm just so used to stuff being rusted shut on here. Okay, so pull this out. There goes that. Probably should leave these in order. Just in case. Looks like I just lost the washer on the... Let's try the other one out. Let me... So greasy. Oh, geez, that popped right out. That was a waste of time. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see what's in here. These do not look like factory covers. They're completely pitted and rusted. This must be the rest of the, uh, the brake bracketry. Is that how you get to that? So, okay, here's the deal. It, the manual says you got to pull this this uh, bar out here. And this connects all the brake linkage here and here. But I, I'm pretty sure I can just remove this pin right here that's connected to one side of the brake band and then remove the pin over here. And then I should be able to just pull the whole thing out without having to take this bar out because I cannot get this pulled out. I started pulling it a little bit over here. Uh, I got it out a little bit, but it was just, it's just way too hard. I don't want to break anything. So I already got the pin disconnected there and uh, over here. So this, this is all free now. So it should just pull right out. I guess we'll find out. Okay, last step is to remove these bearing cage caps. There's one over here too. And then it says to loosen this nut. Uh, well, actually, it's not the last step. The last step is removing the, the bolts around both the sides. But anyway, get these out. These have obviously already been taken off before because these are, you can tell these have been bent back. It does say to mark these. So I'm gonna mark these left and right real quick. The uh, bearing caps here. Uh oh. Shaft is rusty, but it's not, not where the uh, bearing retainer was, or the uh, gear retainer, so that'll be okay. Now we just need to loosen these yellow things. Uh, it says in here you just do one, but they've obviously done both of these. I guess I'll just try real quick to loosen it. I guess you go this way to loosen it, and we'll see.
Seems to be right. Okay, loose. Now for the fun part is getting these bolts off, which is actually the last part, right? I'm gonna leave it there for this video. Next one, I'll get the steering clutch and bevel gear out. My plan to do this, by the way, is I got this, see this two by six? This is holding up the transmission right now, and uh, so I can roll it without it falling over. I do have a jack, a uh, floor jack under there, just in case this, this two by six breaks, but I think it'll be fine. It's not really, uh, it's not really even bending on there. So I am gonna roll it uh, forward and backwards to get those bolts off. And that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, I can just probably get over here with the jack on the, uh, the grousers and move it here and there. So that is gonna be it for this video. Uh, a couple things I wanted to talk about real quick. One was I get a lot of questions about how am I gonna remember to put this back together? And um, you know, this really isn't my first messy project like this. And just, you know, there's, there's piles of bolts here where I have no idea where these go anymore. But you look at these bolts, they're just thrashed. I would never want to reuse these bolts. So I'm going to replace the bolts anyways, and that's pretty common for an older project like this. So just, just take, even taking this thing apart, I can tell that the bolts that are being placed, I mean, they're not the right size. Some of them are the wrong length. Some of them are too short. Some are too long. It's really not that much difficult. I'm going to have to go through every bolt hole and chase it with a tap anyway. It's not going to be that hard to measure the depth and the size and then just replace everything. I'll just get a, you know, a bulk order of a bunch of different sizes and then just go from there. So another big point of contention I saw in the comments was if I should paint this or not. Originally, and I think I mentioned this, that I wasn't planning on painting it. And I think it, it kind of looks cool when it's not painted, but at the same time, I don't really care that much. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll put a poll up and like as a community posting. And uh, you can go there. If, if I don't even think you have to be a subscriber. You can just go to my, uh, to my channel page and then click on community, I think it is. And then you can, I'll, I'll have a poll up and you can vote. Um, just to keep it clear, I, this is not going to be a restoration. This is like a resurrection. This is, we're going to make it re reliable and running and working again, but it's actually going to go back to work. It's not going to just be sitting in my garage here. Um, it, when, if I do point paint it though, uh, I would say I'm not going to paint stuff that I haven't worked on. So basically I would paint this whole middle section all the way forward engine and all that, but not the drive section because I haven't worked on that yet. I wouldn't want to just waste time painting it when I'm going to, have to eventually probably take it apart. So it might look a little bit silly, uh, just the center section painted. I don't know. Anyway, I'll let you guys decide. I don't really care. All right. So with all that said, thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate it. And I will hopefully be back next week to continue working on this thing.